Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a really weird rolling pin. A while back I was looking around on Pinterest and I ran across a picture of a rolling pin made from making ravioli. And it dawned on me at that moment that I had no idea how ravioli was made before that. It was kind of a cool looking object and I wasn't really sure how they were put together so I decided to give it a shot. I don't really have any need to make ravioli but I do like the idea of being able to deconstruct something and figure out how to make your own. In fact the more I think about it I would actually rather have one of these for making little dessert ravioli rather than real ravioli. Alright let's give it a shot and see how it goes. I had a couple of pieces of teak and a nice slab of cherry that I wanted to use. I ran it through the planer a couple of times just to clean off both faces so that they would glue together nicely. I cut off one edge of this using the fence and then laid that cut edge against the fence to cut two equal strips. Once I had both of these cut, I used one of them as a spacer to set up a stop block on my miter saw, then turn the piece and cut a bunch of squares. I added quite a bit of glue to one side of each of these pieces and used a brush to spread it around, trying to make sure that it covered as much as possible. I stacked all these up and put it in the clamps. While those were drying in the clamps, I ran both of my strips over the table saw to make sure that they were the same thickness. After a couple of hours, I was pretty sure that all the glue had dried, so I took it out of the clamps and then used a straight edge going from corner to corner on each end to find a center point. Really quickly, I want to point out a mistake that I made so that you can avoid it. After I glued up that block, I forgot to scrape off the outsides and square it up as a block. In a second, I'm going to run it over the table saw, and when I did that, it actually wasn't laying flat against the table. At the time, it didn't seem like that big of a deal, but it actually changed the depth of the cuts for each one of the slots that I was making. So even though it wasn't that big of a deal at the moment, it did have some effects down the line. Just learn from my mistake, square up your block before you take it to the table saw. I swapped out my table saw blade for a dado stack that was the same width as the strips that I'd cut just a little while ago. I made sure that it was also set to the same height. I set the fence so this piece was centered over the blade and then I ran it through four times making a slot on each side of this piece. I chucked it up in the lathe and started tearing it down to a cylinder. While I'm doing that, I need to thank the sponsor for this video, Audible. And I'm sure you've heard of Audible before, but if you've never tried them, now is the time to do it. If you sign up for a free 30-day trial, they give you a book, and you get to keep the book whether you keep the service or not. We recently went on a road trip with the kids, and to keep them entertained in the car for about three hours, we listened to the BFG. The voice acting in this is awesome. It's one guy that does all of the different giants. It's really fantastic, and I actually like the audiobook way better than the movie. If you want to support I Like to Make Stuff, go check out the people that sponsor me. It makes a really big difference. Go to audible.com slash make stuff, get your free trial and your free book. I wanted to keep the cylinder as large as I could, but also get rid of any flat spots. I kept checking it and taking a little bit more off, and eventually I got it down to a pretty good cylinder. I used some sandpaper at a much slower speed to smooth out the surface. The edges of the slots were a little rough too, so I just ran over them with sandpaper and they smoothed right up. Back on the miter saw, I set up a stop block so I could slice the cylinder down into pieces. I set it at the same thickness of my original material, so basically I was cutting through all of the glue lines when I had made up this block. Being a circle, this was actually pretty hard to do. I was worried about it rolling, so I used a clamp to hold it against the back fence, but eventually it got too small to safely hold, so I moved to the crosscut sled to finish it up. I laid out the strips and then set all the pieces in place, figuring out how thick they were and how much gap I needed in between them. I marked this out on the piece of wood so I knew how long to cut my strips. I cut four strips down. Before I assembled it, I decided to take advantage of my laser and put my logo on the end of one of these. Then I just added some glue to the strips and started knocking everything together. You can see here that things don't line up perfectly because of the issue I talked about earlier. It was close enough that I could kind of brute force it into shape, but in the future I would definitely square up that block before I did anything else. I made sure to add glue on all three of the surfaces where these strips were pushed in and tried to make sure that everything was forced all the way down to the bottom of the slot. Then I got out my trusty clamps and tried to make sure that every connection had some pressure on it so that it would dry nice and tight. I also wiped off as much glue from the inside as I could before it dried, that made it a lot easier. Eventually, after this was drying out of the clamps, I took it to the sander to try to smooth out those strips. They were a little bit proud in some places, again, because of the issue I mentioned earlier. I finished up just by going over the whole thing with a fine sanding pad. For finishing, I used a combination of beeswax and mineral oil, but you could use anything that's food safe, anything you would use on a cutting board would work great here. Then it was time to try it out. Of course you could make real ravioli, but I actually just wanted dessert. 
I rolled it over a pie crust and this left some small indentations that showed me where I needed to put the filling. I just used some pie filling, put in a few globs and laid over another pie crust. Then I rolled back over it and it actually worked. I was really surprised. I thought about making this tool as well and I might in the future, but I just used a cutter to cut them up, put them in the oven, let them cook for about seven or eight minutes and I had some nice little pies. That turned out to be pretty cool and I was actually really happy that it worked. I was a little concerned that the spaces were gonna to be too close together, it wasn't gonna be big enough, and I realized that I'd made it longer than it was wide, so they were gonna be kinda of weird looking. Using it for desserts actually worked out perfectly because now they look like little tiny pies. In case you were wondering, that was just a pie filling inside some store-bought pie crust at 450 degrees for about seven minutes. This may not be a thing that you use in your kitchen very often, I know I probably won't, but it was a really cool challenge to figure out how to replicate it. And also, I'm always looking for projects that give me an excuse to practice on my new lathe. Anyway, this was a fun thing to figure out how to do. I'd love to know what you think about it. Let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other project videos of all different types, so be sure to check those out. And if you don't want to ever miss a video, be sure to subscribe and then hit the bell down there so you get notified as soon as I upload. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.